Well, for several years running, the tech giant Apple has been this country's most lucrative company. It regularly earns tens of billions in profits every year. Despite that, for reasons that aren't exactly clear, lawmakers are eager to give Apple tax breaks. Tax breaks that you're not getting and could never get because, sorry, you're not Apple. For example, in return for expanding its campus in Austin, Texas, Williamson County, where Austin is, is prepared to give Apple a property tax break worth more than $20 million. Again, are you getting anything like that? Probably not. Why are they getting it? Chip Roy is a Republican. He's the congressman-elect for the 21st Congressional District of Texas, and he joins us tonight. Mr. Roy, thank you very much. Congrats, by the way, on winning, and thanks for coming on tonight. What, why Good evening, Tucker. Thank you. would any county give Apple a tax break? Well, you know, that's a great question. It's a question that I've been asking, and I know that there's a, a popular uh, mode of uh, doing business in this country now to try to pay businesses to move to your state, but I don't think you need to pay people to move to Texas. Texas is a great state with low tax yeah. rates and good reasons to move here, so I don't understand why we would give upwards of $50 million to a company that has up uh, close to $250 billion in cash in the bank and a trillion dollar market cap, which is bigger than the GDP of about 180 countries. It's just more of the same corporate cronyism that we see at the federal, state, and local level that I think uh, voters are getting tired of. I know that when I heard on the campaign trail, people are getting sick of that. Nobody says anything about it. I mean, when Amazon did this in New York, one of the only people, and I'm ashamed to say this, was not a Republican, just the opposite, it was Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And everyone else on both sides are, no, no, Amazon good, Amazon good. Why does nobody raise an alarm over this kind of behavior? Well, I think a lot of people, particularly on the Republican side of the aisle, hide behind job creation. And they think that, uh, well, we just throw money around, it's going to create jobs. And the fact of the matter is, I think we are uh, chasing, you know, good money after bad while we throw money at corporations that have tons of, of resources. And frankly, they don't, they're not sharing our values. Corporations are attacking our sure. core Texas values, our core American values. You've got Tim Cook lecturing us about border security and how we're somehow inhumane because we want to have border security. What is inhumane is having cheap labor in China, prop up your profits, and then tell us how we should live our lives in Texas. And I'm frankly kind of sick of it. I think it's inhumane that little girls are getting sold into the sex trade because we don't have border security. And yet we're getting lectured by Tim Cook about what we need to do and being held ransom for $50 million in Texas when they've got $250 billion in cash in the bank. And I just don't think that's the way things ought to fly. I've been really hoping so fervently the Republican Party would change and the fact that you just got elected is evidence that it is. So thank you very much. Chip Roy, congrats again. God bless. Thanks, Tucker. Look forward to it. Take care. Instead of giving big tech huge tax breaks, what should lawmakers be doing about their growing influence? One person who's been thinking about this for a long time and getting no credit for it, believe it or not, is Ralph Nader, of course, the longtime consumer advocate, author of the new book, How the Rats Reformed in Congress. He joins us tonight. Mr. Nader, thank you very much for coming on. The reason I want to talk to you is I don't think you've gotten the credit you deserve for being a lone voice on the left, raising concerns about the concentration of power in the tech sector. What happens when you say that out loud? Well, the Congress always bemused by the razzle-dazzle of Silicon Valley and, and you know, a, a supposedly clean industry has horrible pollution coming in from the supply chain and all the rot when they dismantle the stuff. Uh, and uh, they have no tech capability to ask the right questions. So, Newt Gingrich in 1995 got rid of the Office of Technology Assessment in Congress, which is the professional advisor. So when they deal with things like, you know, ballistic missile defense or Facebook or Google, they would have the experts right there. And uh, so there they are. They have these hearings and, you know, outrage and admiration came from the members of the House yes. and the Senate, but it went nowhere. So the question coming up in Congress is, are they going to regulate them like they're supposed to, you know, they regulate cars or pharmaceuticals? Yes. Or are they going to just have quasi-regulation like the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation does for banks? Or are they going to create a trade association to regulate them with standards overseen by some agency? It doesn't look good. The Federal Trade Commission nailed Facebook in 2011, led by David Vladek the Consumer Protection Bureau, and haven't enforced at all. And Facebook has been violating or letting others, third party, Ford party, Cambridge Analytics, violate that consent decree. And it's, but, but where, okay, so you became famous 1965-ish yeah. going yeah. after General Motors. Yeah. And the right didn't like you because you were attacking business, but the left loved you. You became this huge hero. You're saying the same thing now about the big tech companies why is no one joining your side? We don't get on the mass media. 
uh, the civic communities that are raising issues of crony capitalism, corporate welfare, these kind of tax breaks, you know, for yes. uh, Apple. Apple's just burning $100 billion in stock buybacks instead of giving it back to the shareholders or the workers or the uh, environment cleanup or the pension funds. Uh, they want to buy back all that stock to increase the metrics for the executive compensation packages for Tim Cook and others. And you can't get on uh, national TV on it. You can't even get on NB, NPR and, and PBS. Why? I mean, I've been talking about corporate welfare and the right is talks about crony capitalism. Uh, so we're converging, right? I think there are a lot of issues in this country, as I pointed out in my book, uh, Unstoppable, where conservatives and liberals back home where they work, live, and raise their families, right? Never mind the ideology, red right. state, blue state. They bleed, they get ripped off the same way, disrespected, exactly. disempowered. And there's no uh, uh, publicity given, given to it at all. That, so I'm, I've resorted to a fable. <laughs> How the rats reform the country. It's a big rat infestation, you know, yeah. in D.C. Literally. Yeah, literally. And they come up from the catacombs in this book, and they get into the toilet bowls, First with the speaker, you can imagine the result. Yes. They try to suppress an increasing rat infestation, massive derision all over the country. It wakes people up. They look at 535 men and women uh, in Congress who are using their delegated power under the we the people, right? And then they organize a mass uh, movement and get control of Congress from the corporatists, from the Wall Streeters. You pointed out in your book, the ruling class you should share power, otherwise they're going to lose it whatever democratic institutions we have. So members of Congress have called this disgusting, outrageous, revolting because of the opening pages. But you go back on this. This is the single most devastating documented in yeah. indictment of Congress on one page. I'm going to read it. I don't know. I remember at one point disagreeing yeah. with you on stuff, but I can't remember what it was. I now think that on this stuff, anyway, you're an important voice, well, and I'm grateful that you came on the show. You go to RatsReformCongress.org. RatsReformCongress. And you'll get an instruction. I'm going to, and I probably agree with a lot of it. You'll you get this. instruction on how to organize back home. <laughs> I love it. Congress Rat Watcher groups. Rat Ralph Nader, it's great to see you. Thank you. Thanks for the sign. We've got a Fox News alert. The Senate has passed criminal justice reform. The bill passed 87 to 12. Wow, big margin. The president strongly encouraged Congress to act on the bill before the end of the lame duck session. That bill now goes to the House. Obviously, we'll continue to follow this story. We'll be right back with an important holiday message for you after the break.